uh, solutions in there, uh, Mapadoc, Starship, and, and ScanForce for you to, to be able to have a, provided an overview. Uh, the title of our webinar is Pick, Pack, Ship for Sage 100 ERP, and uh, we'll be showing you 13 cost uh, savings uh, benefits to, to the solution. Um, some of the things that we do want to just kind of do as far as housekeeping and all that good stuff, um, you know, obviously, uh, from uh, from we're going to be switching uh, monitors to monitors. So always be aware that if your if your monitor um, kind of seems a little small, that there's the ability for you to um, uh, make your size of your screen a little bit bigger up in the upper left hand corner of your screen. Um, also, is in during the session, everybody will be muted. Um, we will be taking a few questions at the end, uh, time per minute. And if you would like to ask a question, feel free to, to, to uh, uh, type in a question in our question box. And as, as we get to the very end, uh, we will do that. I will say this, uh, many of the times this, this, this group is so good at um, doing their, their presentation that there are not always questions there. So um, if you do have one, please don't, be, please don't uh, feel shy or anything like that. Ask the questions, and if we have time, we will get to those. So at this point, I'm going to quickly do a little introduction. Uh, we will, from Mapadoc is Bill Gauss, our sale, uh, sales engineer. From Starship is Caroline Walsh, VP of Sales and Marketing. And from ScanForce is Steve Showalter, our, their sales manager. Um, so now I'm having a little technical on my part. Oh, come on. Um, so. So uh, just real quickly, um, we're going to be turning this over to the demo. Um, so what we'll be having um, is as far as uh, Mapadoc and Starship and ScanForce. So at this point, I am going to turn the presentation over to uh, Bill Gauss with Mapadoc. Thanks, Joe. And, and everyone, we certainly appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy day to join us today to, to walk through kind of what we call our our triple threat. And what we'll to kind of give you an idea of, we'll walk through, you know, bringing in the EDI order through Mapadoc into Sage 100 and the different ways that we can do that. Um, you know, then I'll pass it over to Steve at ScanForce to walk through his portion of packing and actually shipping um, um, the products and items. And then we'll actually walk through how, you know, not only ScanForce integrates with Mapadoc, but also pack it, pass it back over to Caroline at Starship to walk through through inter her integration with, with carriers and things of that nature and how that feeds back into Mapadoc and then close it out. And then I'll turn it back over to Joe to actually uh, open it up for any questions because I'm sure we'll have enough time here here at the end. So as you can see here, this is your standard Stage 100, Stage 100 system. Now Mapadoc, as you can see, if you're not familiar with it, we are completely in the an integrated solution into Sage 100, 500, and ERP X3. We've been in the in the Sage channel now for over 20 years, so we certainly understand the different intricacies of each different ERP, um, the different versions, things of that nature. Now, Mapadoc, you know, works all the way back to you know we have some customers on 405. Now, we certainly don't recommend that, um, but we we are also also the latest the the latest version of Sage, which being 20 2015. So we take a lot of pride in not only being completely embedded in the Sage platform. But also at the same time, making sure we're we're coming out and being you know coming out and being up to date with with where Sage is going as well. Um, you know today specifically around 100, but also as we speak to Sage 500 and ERP X3. So up front, we'll, we'll what we're going to do is take an EDIPO and create that create sales orders in Sage um, from an EDI standpoint. How we handle it now, Mapadoc is the integration layer in and out of Sage. Um, you know, from an EDI standpoint. So the, from a user standpoint, they don't need to leave the Sage platform to process EDI. And Mapadoc works with a couple of different um, solutions out there from an EDI standpoint, because when we're looking at it, there, you know, there's a lot of components that go into EDI. Um, one being connectivity, another component being connecting. So we do work with other solutions out there, more of like an on-premise type of solution where you're managing the EDI in your system, or a cloud-based solution that does that connects to the, the the tr our customer's customer or the EDI trading partners um, on, on their behalf. So it all depends on what's the right fit for your company. We can certainly, we have conversations on that on a, on a daily basis of, you know, what, what the right fit is and what we recommend. So when our customers at this point, they, were, they receive an EDIPO and Mapadoc 
can be is completely embedded. So when they receive that EDIPO, they don't need to go into another piece of software or another interface to, to bring in that EDIPO and create that sales order. So as you can see here, Mapadoc is just like any other module within Sage. And so we have the same look and feel, um, same interfaces written in the same tool set. So from a user standpoint, again, they don't need to leave the Sage interface. And we're able to leverage a lot of the Sage processes um, to streamline EDI. Now, if you're out to date with Mapadoc, uh, or I'm sorry, with Stage 100, at, if you can't, on the 5.0 version, they came with all these nice visual process flows that allow you to walk through visually what the process is all the way through. And so we, us at Mapadoc have created the same type of process flow so that the user really knows where they're at within the process. So taking the EDIPO and creating that sales order and sales order entry is a three-step process. Now, this can be set up to be completely automated. So, you know, a lot of our users don't want to have to click a button. Say the EDIPO comes in, they want to have to cre create directly the sales order entry without them having to have any sort of um, tasks or that the customer service teams have to have to do. So we can certainly set up to be unattended where our customers receive reports of what was created in the system, what was validated in the system. Uh, but a lot of our customers as well like to have a little bit more control. So it's all based off our customers' um, preference and, you know, comfortability with, you know, with with orders coming directly in the system, but we also do provide reports. So there's a lot of visibility there. So the first step is receive EDI. And this reaches up to the EDI platform and pulls any available new POs down, okay? And now the first report, now all, you'll see a lot of exception reports within Mapadoc as we walk through this today. All our reports are based within Crystal, so they can be linked to Paperless Office if you're using Paperless Office today as well. Now I'm gonna preview the first report. This first report really just shows um, high level, what was brought in in that batch. So it will tell you the the trading partner that we found, the company that went into. Um, Mapadoc is multi-company and multi-user, so we don't take up a Sage license um, or a seat um, in Sage. Um, and also, we if you have different companies in Sage that are doing EDI, we're, we're compatible with that as well. But this report just basically saying, hey, we connected to the, we pulled down the, the EDI orders for this trading partner, there was two of them. And then Mapadoc is, will bring you to the steps. So Mapadoc is very intuitive, so when I exit this report and clear it, it's going to bring you to the next step is of actually validation. And this is where we really differentiate from other solutions in the Sage channel, is we actually validate the orders before we actually trade them in the system. So think, you know, really, you know, most common is, you know, validating ship to code, um, validating item code, um, validating pricing, to make sure we're catching any potential issues up front to avoid the issues in the back end when you're getting into, you know, sending your ASNs, your labels, your invoices, where you, where you are exposed to chargebacks when it comes to EDI. And catching those issues up front really minimize the possibility of those chargebacks on, on the back end. So here, if you had multiple trading partners, now this, again, Mapadoc is, you don't have to go through this process for each trading partner. If there was multiple POs out there that were brought down, those trading partners would fill in this grid. In this case, we only have one trading partner, ABF. So we'll click validate here. That's going to validate the two orders. And now we'll provide you a report of what was just validated. So really think of validation as creating a sales order without actually creating a sales order. Okay? Um, so this is where we break it down by customer. We'll tell you the PO that was processed. Um, Mapadoc is able to take the price on the EDI order or the price you have set up in Sage and then report if there's a mismatch. We also are able to tell you if this PO exists, already exists on another sales order, so you don't need to worry about duplication. And Mapadoc can go all the way from stopping the order from being created with these issues or just reporting on it. In this case, we're just reporting on it. So you can just, it gives you an example of how flexible the solution is um, based off your needs when, when dealing with EDI customers. So the next portion is we're actually going to create the order. So we're going to exit out of this report, clear it, and Mapadoc will automatically prompt me for the last step is actually creating the orders in the system. So again, very similar to the last grid that you saw, we have one trading partner in here, ABF, we'll click proceed, and that just created the two orders directly in the sales order entry. Okay, and this ne the report, the next report that we provide is very similar to the last one that you saw, but we just provide you the sales order number as well. So it's like the, the PO number, the sales order number, and then also the additional information that we provided on the last report. Um, you know, this, this information can be turned on, on and off in regards to notification, so again, we're very flexible and it's all based off of you know what your customer service team needs or your your um, your team or um, personnel that is actually managing bringing in the orders what they actually want to see. 
Um, most of the times they don't even see everything, so we, we can turn things on and off as well. Um, again, we can go in sequence with Sage's standard numbering system, so that seven-digit code that you're seeing today for manually entering the orders, and we can prefix your suffix by trading partner. Um, for example, you know, AB, we place an AB in front of all orders for ABF. So just, just an example there to have a little more differentiation at the sales order level. So we're going to exit out of here, clear our report. And we do provide you one last report. This is just a quick snapshot of what was processed in that batch. So it'll tell you the, or the order number, PO number, total units, and total dollar amount. So that's the process of creating the sales orders directly in the system. Now, before I hand it over to Steve, I'm actually going to pull up one of the orders that we created. Um, in the system just to just to point out you know what we actually populated on the order itself so again this is standard sales order entry um, and we're following the same rules as if you're manually entering the order so we're picking and choosing what you want from PO so you may have defaults set up by ship to code by customer that are populating now that you still want populated they will we're not going to overwrite those we can pick and choose like before I go, you know for example warehouse you know, warehouse is typically not something that's sent on the EDI PO. So that's something that's set by the customer or the ship to code. So that will populate automatically as it is today. And then, you know, information from the EDI PO will automatically populate in the order as well. So here you have order date, customer PO number, ship to code. Now we're seeing a lot of more drop ship or direct consumer fulfillment um, with our customer base. So the way that we handle that is we would actually just populate the, the direct to consumer address directly on the ship to address because you having to maintain each separate consumer address would be impossible, and nor do your customers do it. Um, so we would just populate the direct consumer address directly on um, the sales order for you to avoid that manual entry. And then obviously the lines tab, um, a popular correct item codes, the quantity ordered, the pricing, things, things of that nature. So that's really the process. Um, at this point, Sage takes over because the order is in the system. So at this point, I'm going to actually turn it over to Steve at, at ScanForce to actually walk through, walk through his process of shipping. So Steve, I'll, I'll transfer the screen directly over to you. All right. Thanks, Bill. All right, everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what you all are looking at here is an emulation of one of the scanners that is compatible with the ScanForce solution. <clears throat> We've actually been a developer in the Sage community for Sage 100, previously Mass 90, uh, for over 20 years, and ScanForce has been around since 1998. And ScanForce is a really stable, scalable solution. And when I mention it being scalable, I mean that really in two ways. The first would be in terms of the real-time capabilities. ScanForce can be as real-time as you want it to be, depending on your wireless coverage, but it also can function disconnected from the network, still providing data validation and even data lookups. Basically, what ScanForce on the warehouse side offers is the automation of receiving, shipping, and then inventory transactions as well. And that brings in the other scalable side of this. We have some customers that simply want to do inventory counts. We have other customers that want to have a simple receiving process, others that have a more complex or need to receive by items if they're receiving containers, for example, you can just scan by item and quickly create a receipt of goods and have that automatically not only import but also post, giving you a real-time solution. From the inventory side, that might be inventory moves from either a warehouse to another warehouse or even a bin to another bin in a, a multi-bin environment. And then that final part of this would be shipping. Now, within shipping, there are a ton of options. You can have a basic shipping solution where you're simply picking items and ScanForce will validate items and quantities even lot numbers and serial numbers, you can do things that like combining uh, multiple orders into a wave to go one time through the warehouse to pick those, do a pick and then pack, and then we have a lot of integration to other third-party solutions such as the Mapadoc solution pairs in with uh, Starship, and that's what I'm going to show you here today. So when you launch ScanForce, the first thing our program is going to do is ask you on the device here who you are, what your user ID is. ScanForce doesn't take up additional Sage licenses. These are actually maintained within our database, just giving you control as far as who's allowed to do what. So you can choose from a drop-down, scan that, even key it in. You can have a password protected there so people can share devices, and it also supports a multi-company environment. Now, we're going to assume, as Bill already showed, that an order is already in your system, and now you need to pick that order. So that order is sitting there, and you need to make sure the correct items and the correct quantities are getting out to your customers. So what you can do is simply launch order processing, and from here you can launch the sales order Mapadoc picking program on the device. 
Now what it's doing here is simply launching that program based on those user profile settings. At this point, I don't even need to be connected to a wireless network. However, at the point here where it's going to now prompt me for that order number, this is where ScanForce does connect up to your network and it grabs that data directly from your Sage database, placing it on the device. So if you happen to get disconnected from your network or your network just goes down, um, you still have instant data validation and even data lookup on your device. So your options here, you could do a lookup, find the sales order that way. You could key it in or most people have a barcode for that sales order, either on the picking sheet or elsewhere, where you can simply shoot it with the scanner it's going to connect up and instantly load the data for that order onto my device. Now, you'll see here on the screen, it's very easy for the user. It's prompting them for one piece of data at a time. First order, now it's prompting for item. Up here, it's going to ask me for the package number. Now, it defaults to package one. And with the integration of the MapAdoc program, what that's doing is it's allowing you to separate items by the carton. And that carton ID will be assigned by the MapAdoc program upon import. So it'll default to one. And now I can start scanning items. Now you have an item lookup, whether you're disconnected or connected, and that'll simply just show you the items that are on this order in the quantity, and they will drop off of this as you pick them. If you happen to scan the incorrect item, maybe you're just not paying attention, it looks like the right item, you just grabbed the wrong one for whatever reason, the second you scan that, the program's going to alert you telling you that it's not on the order or you've already shipped it. So you have that instant data validation that the users are actually picking the correct items that are on that order. When you scan a valid barcode, it's going to display for me that item description, and I even get a quantity summary of what's on this particular order and what I've already shipped. The device now prompts me to key in the quantity. That also could be scanned or set up with what we call auto increment. And what that does is it takes as a quantity of one each time you scan a valid barcode. Over here, we display the unit of measure. So if you have multiple units of measure set up for an item, it's going to take whatever's on the sales order, but allow you to change that if you happen to have different units of measure. For example, if you have cases and each is, you'd be allowed to switch that and it would convert the quantities over here based on what's set up in your item maintenance back in Sage. So let's say five of this item happened to fit in the package or carton one, indicate a quantity of five, continue on. We'll change to the next package simply by tapping on that icon, scan that item. It'll know that I've already shipped five, so my balance left is simply five. If I try to overpick this, we also validate that and we tell you either overshipping is not allowed or you could have it set to warn you and allow that user to overpick. And again, that is controlled by the user profiles. So we'll continue on, go to package three, scan our next item. Once again, let's say five fit into that package or carton. Go to the final package here and complete our picking. Now at this point, I could view what I've already collected. If I lost track of what I've done, I could even go in here, highlight something, delete it, and then repick it if I needed to. So you have a little bit of editing power right here on the device. Otherwise, this button here symbolizes that I'm done with this order. At this point, I could see some collected information, even save it, get back into it, or send my data back to Sage. Now when I tap on send data here, with the integration with MapAdoc, <coughs> excuse me, I have the ability to check off that I want to print the packing list upon import, and I could even print my ASN case labels if I wanted to upon import. When you choose that, you could also differentiate which printer you want to print to or simply just send your data over to Sage right here. Now, if you happen to be outside of wireless and you go to send your data, you don't ever have to worry about losing that information. It'll simply alert you telling you unable to connect to the host and it'll store that data on the handle for you to send later. Now, when I send this over, it's going to communicate up wirelessly and it's going to, our import will grab that and now place it over into the MapAdoc programs. So when I pull this up back in Sage now, and I go into edit order, package, label, data, and pull up my order that I just did. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's the case information. When I go into the cart and ID and do a lookup, you'll see it's broken down by the th uh, four packages that I did, and you can see what's in each one of these. And at this point, this is where now I'm going to pass it back over to Bill, and you guys can take it over from there. And that just simply, again, showed you how you can quickly and easily capture that data on the scanner, have it validated, and simply and seamlessly import back to your Sage system. Great. Thanks, Steve. So while Steve is, is transferring the screen back to back to me, what we'll do here next is just the same thing that Steve showed you. We'll show you how the order, how the information came back in from ScanForce back into MapAdoc and how that applies to EDI ASN. Then I'm going to hand it over to Caroline 
um, to actually walk through um, the Starship portion of how that plays into, into this process. Perfect. So, Carolyn, do you actually want to give me controls real quick? Yeah, you should have controls. Hold on one second. Okay. There we go. All right, got it. Yep, thank you. All right, sorry for that, for that delay, everyone. Um, so, as we walk through this, similar to the last screen that you saw in regards to orders, kind of going back to the beginning of, of the process. Um, MapAdoc does have the same visual for the ASNs, and I'm sure all of you know um, if you're dealing with EDI today and dealing with trading partners that require the ASNs, it's certainly probably it's probably causing the most headaches. Um, the reason being is the information that they require, um, timing, you know, getting exposed to chargebacks, so and not only the requirements but also the financial implications as well. So we have our own ASN module that again works alongside ScanForce and Starship. That is where you're able to to print your UCC 128 labels. Um, you know, import the tracking from Starship, for example, and then also send out your ASNs in the format that your customer requires. I mean, we have a lot of customers dealing with a lot of different requirements. Um, and we know Stage is not geared for EDI, and that's even more true for, um, for the ASN document, so that's where we come into play. Now, real quickly, I'm going to pull up where Steve left off in our edit order package and label data screen. This is where the orders come in from ScanForce. So as they come in from ScanForce, like, like Steve mentioned, it will tell you the number of cases that were packed, the quantities that were picked, the weight of the items as well, so you don't need to actually enter the weight of the items. We can auto-calculate that as long as you have weight set up on the system. Um, the ship via as well. And then also, if your customer requires that UCC 128 label, so if you're shipping to a DC or store, they most likely are. Um, as they import back in from ScanForce, those will automatically print in the format that your customer requires into your label printer on site. Um, every, just like the ASN, everyone has their own different label format requirements for you. Um, so you don't, it's not like you need to go in and select a specific label template for each. Uh, MapAdoc is able to recognize, hey, you know, the order came back in from ScanForce. It's for this customer. They require the ASN and print the UCC 120 label. So just got to kind of give you an idea of how we handle that. So at this point, I'm going to actually turn over to Caroline and actually walk through the, the Starship portion of, you know, how they integrate with the carriers and how that also integrates with MapAdoc. Thanks, Bill. So um, right um, as you're in this edit order and um, package label data within MapDoc, you'll see this little Starship button here. Um, and this connects directly up to um, sends a transaction off to the Starship client that would be loaded on this machine so that you can actually ship the packages um, that were scanned in through the ScanForce solution. Um, and when we first bring the Starship user interface up, um, in this particular um, instance, I have address validation turned on, and it's telling me that the address needs to be validated here. Um, Starship does offer a couple levels of validation, uh, zip plus four residential and commercial against the post office database, and it also offers secondary validation with the UPS and FedEx carriers specifically for the residential um, checkbox or surcharges to make sure that uh, you are sending up the correct flag to the carriers to reduce the additional costs that they may be um, sending your way if you're not sending the right flag up. So in this case, um, we'll see here that on the left-hand pane of Starship's user interface, it'll give you basically an overview of this particular shipment. Um, you know, the fact that we're retrieving it from the one, Sage 100 invoice, um, that was created by the MapAdoc solution, this AB12, um, the sender, which is you as well as the recipient here. And if you look down at the bottom of my screen, you'll notice the packaging view here. I can expand these. You'll see my four boxes here that were defined on via the ScanForce solution. If I expand these, you'll see the items that are in each of these boxes. So all of this is predefined based on what you scanned in on the handheld which um, can reduce a lot of time from a shipping perspective, as well as assist in that whole um, you know, integration back into MapDoc to create the ASN. So if I wanted to, just from a carrier perspective here, I could do a rate shop. Starship does communicate with um, a numerous amount of carriers, both small package and LTL. Um, typically, we're sending um, 
information out and hitting their servers directly in almost all cases, um, where we can connect it directly up to the carrier server to get your most accurate negotiated rates at the time that you're rate shopping. So here you see um, that I'm getting a combination here of um, UPS, FedEx, there's a couple LTL carriers here, Old Dominion and Conway. Um, and you'll see here that I'm looking at my contract rates. So these would be the discounted rates. Um, so I can determine which way I want to ship it. Um, if I drill into any of these rates, you'll also see that I have um, you know, details about what it is that this, this rate, um, what's making up this rate here. So for UPS or um, usually Old Dominion, you'll see better discounts here, 75% discount off of um, the book rate with Old Dominion. Um, the other thing with Starship is uh, you can have Starship um, set up to have predefined rules where you can define um, how and when a carrier should be selected based on your criteria. So if you had like a needs by date of um, let's say Monday and you wanted to get it there the least expensive way, um, Starship could automatically, you know, maybe in this case select UPS 3-day if you wanted to do that. Um, or you could give the operator the ability to modify from here or um, in the Starship, on the Starship side too, just to let you know, you do have some um, user, username and IDs that you use to log in to get to this client um, and those can have permissions associated to it. So if you didn't want your shipper to be able to modify um, the ship via that either was translated from the um, invoice or that was uh, automatically selected by Starship, you um, would have the option not to let your shipper actually modify from there. So really I'm ready to uh, process the shipment. I'm just going to do a ship and process here um, or the F5 button or barcode and Starship is going to um, communicate out to the carrier, print out the barcoded shipping labels, um, packing lists if you want Starship to print those out. Um, in this case, this is a combined shipping label and packing list on an 8.5 by 11 with the shipping label in the die cut area of this 8.5 by 11. You can also have the packing list print to a thermal label printer. So if you wanted to save a little bit on your um, cost, paper costs, uh, you could print everything on, um, you know, a shipping um, label, a thermal label that may be provided by the carrier. So here is my first package that Steve scanned in. Um, it has, you know, five of these um, two drawer filing cabinets, and my second package um, also has five. My third package has the four drawer five, and then my fourth package. So it's going to print one label out for each package in this case. Um, if this were an LTL shipment, Starship would um, print out or could print out the BOL. Um, if it were international, we also support printing out the commercial invoice, NAFTA, SCD, any shipping related documents that would need to be printed can be. Um, and we do try to use the item level information that's coming over from the SAGE invoice to help automate that process. The other nice thing that you can get with Starship um, is to use Starship to print out the email that would be associated to the shipment. Um, and the nice thing with the email is that um, it can include the um, item level information too. So usually in the case of EDI, everything is happening electronically, um, but maybe for your non-EDI shipments, you'd want to automate the um, shipment notifications that go out to your directly to the customer um, and include package and item level information. So this is really where, you know, not only with the efficiency and the shipping that you get with the, using a scan for solution, but also, you know, in being able to provide that extra level of detail directly to your customer without you having to, you know, manually enter this information in. And these emails can um, be sent in real time as you're shipping so that they'll get it, you know, right away. And it also can reduce those calls of, that come into customer service related to, like, where's my package kind of deal. So, um, and then also in, um, with the email notifications, you can have different templates if you wanted to. So if you wanted to have a different look and feel for one of your trading partners, you could, you know, create a different um, logo here 
and then maybe have different links going back to your site or somebody else's site from, from within the email. Okay, and now that we've shipped it out, um, Starship has um, updated the information in Mapadoc, and then I'll um, send it back to, to Bill. Great, thanks, Caroline. So I'm just going to pull up one of the cases actually that we um, that Caroline submitted back to to Mapadoc on, and show you as you can see here the tracking number where you populate directly back onto that specific case, and so it really reduces the amount of time that your that your team is having to do to manage the tracking numbers and kind of when we're looking at the full picture, you know, reduces the amount of time that your customers have to to, to take out of their day to manually pack the order, which can be very cumbersome, especially when you you're getting into um, when you're getting into a higher amount of um, cases or pallets, and also the tracking numbers as well. Those are pretty standard when we're looking at EDI requirements for the ASN, and certainly the most manual if you do not have the integrated. Um, so at this point, you know, the order has been packed, the, print, the labels have been printed, the tracking numbers have been, but been applied to each case or each pallet. Um, so at this point, we're actually ready to send out our ASN. And Mapadoc has a very nice feature called ASN Auto Select, where it allows you to select multiple ASNs at a time and create multiple ASNs at a time as well for multiple trading partners. So you can select here by customer number if you like. There's there's a lot of selections in the selection criteria grid that you can use, um, some being customer number, sales order number, uh, ship date, things of that nature. But we do have a very handy little button down here in the bottom left called multiple orders. This will show you any order that's in Mapadoc ASN processing that you have not created an ASN for as of yet. So it's really doing the filtering for you. So here you can see I have my AB0012 order. I can select as many other ones as I want as well. When I go ahead and select, I'll just hit select, select these two as if we, you know, went through that zero, that AB0009 order earlier in the day. I'll hit select. It will confirm if I want to ship it. I'll click yes. And Mapadoc just created two ASNs. Now with versions 2014 and 2015, Mapadoc has came out with what we call unattended ASN processing. Um, so just like you saw on the inbound we do validation. We also do validation on the outbound. And so within, and we've had validation within the solution for a very, very long time, both on the inbound and outbound. It's a, it's a newer feature that we've added to the product. Is once you create the ASNs from here, they can be automatically generated based off a of scheduler. So every minute, every five minutes, every ten minutes, it can send out the ASNs automatically, and then also validate. Excuse me, validate automatically as well. So you could be assured. Let's just say you had five ASNs that you sent and one of them was missing a tracking number or was missing the weight, whatever it may be. Um, it happens. Um, we've, we've all seen it happen in EDI. And so we have put measures in place, and this is where the validation comes into play, is we, we validate the ASNs, and if we find an issue, we're actually going to stop it from being created. So you can be assured that any ASN that's in your system or that's being attempted to be sent out um, will be meeting your customer's requirements and will stay in Mapadoc ASN processing until you um, correct that exception or that issue. So it's not going to delete it. We'll provide you reports of when we actually create the ASNs. Again, those reports can be linked to take the office. Um, so at this point, that's really the ASN process, as you can see with the integration with Mapadoc, ScanForce, and Starship. Now to close it out, before I turn it back over to Joe, um, I'm actually going to walk through the invoicing process. So the invoicing process is very, very simple. Um, it could be said to be completely unattended. Um, so where we come into play from an EDI invoice standpoint is once your invoice is post, so when you close out your sales or journal, that's where Mapadoc has the ability to send out your invoices. Now, from a completely unattended standpoint, we can, once your invoice posts, regardless if you're posting EDI or non-EDI invoices at the same time, we can, we'll look into the invoices that post, I identify if they're for an EDI customer. If they are, automatically select it and then automatically send it out as well. So there's no additional steps that your team needs to do to send out your invoices via EDI outside of what you're already doing today with SAGE. So we're just going to leverage that SAGE process as the trigger to send out the invoices via EDI. Now, if you ever need to resend an invoice, resubmitting in Mapadoc is very simple. Any invoice in history has the ability to be resent at any point in time if it's for an EDI customer. So you can see here you can enter your invoice number range, invoice date, things of that nature. So 
So if your customer ever requests, hey, I we never received this, and you know you did, you you see the acknowledgement, but they request you to resend it, it's very simple. You don't need to go through a lot of hoops to, to select it or to get it out of a queue. At any point in time, any invoice in history for the EDI customer can be can be resent. And that's the same thing with the ASM. We have our ASM history file that's able to be sent out. Now, one last thing I do want to point out is that we've added to the solution a couple years ago is what we call our EDI order inquiry screen. This allows you to track any order and the correlated documents coming out of it. So you can any order that comes through MapDoc, you can pull up the details and it'll allow you to see if a PL has been sent off of an ASN, an invoice, an order status. So it really allows you to see all the way through the process if an ASN has been sent out. Um, it really gives our, our customers, we're, we're looking for some more visibility into the solution, and so we, we listened to them. And we added this, this EDI order inquiry screen that allows them to track their orders and get the visibility into you know, which ASNs they haven't sent out, which PO acknowledgements they haven't sent out, things of that nature. Because MapAdoc just doesn't deal with these three documents. Um, from an EDI standpoint, we have over 20 documents that we integrate from an EDI standpoint into Stage 100. So we're certainly the most integrated out there in the, in, in the Stage channel. Um, but with that, um, you know, I'm going to turn it back over to Joe. I know we have some time here open for questions. So Joe, I'm going to turn it back over to you um, and let excellent. you take the floor. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Thank you very much. And I just want to say thanks to all three of you for doing a great job and keeping us on on pace. Uh, we did that in about less than uh, 40 minutes or so. Um, as they as they typically do, they don't typically get any questions, but this time they actually got uh, three questions. So you guys, and I believe one is for each of you. So I'm going to start with, I, I believe, the very first one that came in. Uh, and this one's for you, Steve. Uh, when you send the data in ScanForce, does it update on, on hand quantities in Sage or not until the invoice is posted? Uh, it's a great question. <clears throat> um, it follows the standard SAGE practices, which would be it's not going to go ahead and reflect the on-hand quantity or anything until it's actually posted. Um, with our auto-posting functionality, for example, on the receiving side then, it'll automatically import and then also auto-post, which will then instantly uh, affect the quantities. So it depends really on how you have your SAGE system set up and within our certain parameters and enhancements to do the you know truly real-time solution. Very cool. Okay, excellent. We've got a few other questions that just popped in. Let me kind of keep them so that I can scroll through through them uh, and keep track. And oh, that question was from Kimberly, and we thank you very much for that. Uh, the next question is, uh, can we enter delivery instructions such as lift gate required? This is from Bob. I believe that's for you, Caroline. Yep, thanks. Hey, Bob. Um, you can, and actually LiftGate is, um, I'm guessing is your um, thinking uh, LTL shipment, and we do have uh, LiftGate options that are associated to the shipment um, so that you could, you know, just have that selection uh, for the LiftGate required. It can be triggered actually from a mapping from within Sage or the Sage invoice if you wanted to, or you could just simply select it on the screen. Um, we also have a special instructions. So if you wanted to put LiftGate in the special instructions, as well as selecting LiftGate required, you could do that. Um, but you definitely want to select the option so that you are you're getting the appropriate rate back from the carrier for it. Very good. And that, and as I said, that question came from. From Bob, um, I'm going to kind of try to keep going down the order. I know a few more popped in on top of me here. Um, this one's for you, Bill. Uh, will MapAdoc supply the UCSS-128 info by carton so that it can be print so that it can print on the Starship uh, shipping label? Yeah, and th that's a good question. So once the as you know as you saw on the webinar the demonstration, sorry, um, the once the order comes back in from ScanForce or at any point. Um, MapAdoc will, audit, will generate those, those UCC carton ID numbers, not just the labels, but those carton ID numbers that apply to each case. And so that will be within MapAdoc. And I believe, Caroline, we can import that back up to, back up to Starship, because that, that information is available before you, you import the information up to Starship. Because once it's in the, the stage where ScanForce imports it back in, those UCC 128 numbers that are by carton are already created. Yep. Very good. 
that's right. Sorry, I just wanted sorry. to make one other note that if you're, you know, usually the, the Mapadoc solution is the solution that you're going to be using to print the 128. And actually, uh, Steve mentioned that you could print them from his as well. Um, but Starship also offers that. So if you wanted to take that 128 number, you know, um, map it over to Starship and then have Starship print that, you could. Um, we don't keep, we, you have the ability to have templates in Starship. We don't necessarily have like a maintenance for the 128 labels. So you know you need to keep up to date if those should change from your trading partner, but you could do that from Starship as well if you wanted to. Okay, and and Tony actually that question was from Tony, and Tony has another one. He says on Starship, I notice I notice source being in being invoice. How does that work when invoice not uh, not even created yet? Tony, that's a good question. <laughs> You're very um, observant there. So the the source name Starship Invoice is um, mainly because um, that the invoice document um, in Sage is what we call the a, like a packed document, and that's the pa packed document that is coming in through Mapadoc. Um, the Mapadoc solution is actually using the same integration as um, what's used in the Starship link for shipping data entry. And I'm actually glad that you asked this question because I want people to um, know that if there are current Starship customers out there using the Starship link and shipping data entry. You can actually use that same interface from within Mapadoc without having to change anything. Um, so that's why you see invoice on there because it's really the, the Starship link interface that's being utilized. Cool. Um, and then we have a question from Zhang. Um, uh, can a rare order this be made available? I'd like to share this with others in our office. Caroline, are we going to be providing this out on your website then? Yep, we'll have a recording of that made available and we'll um, email it out to everybody. Excellent. And then the last question we have here is, this, it's, hi there, is there a PO EDI module in addition to sales order, ASN, and invoice? I believe that would be for Bill. Yeah, and that's a good question. So we do have, Mapadoc does have, that kind of goes back to my point of we have over 20 EDI documents that we can integrate. Um, I think it's like 23 now. But PO, you know, within the purchase order module, we can submit outbound POs and receive back in invoices. So that can go to receipt of goods or um, the other one, which is receipt of invoice. Um, so either, you know, when you're sent, well, so not only can you send those outbound POs, um, but also receive those invoices back in. So very good, and that that is the last question. And I, I want to say, say to everybody, thank you very much for all those good questions. You actually got to quiz them live, <laughs> and they they I think they all stood up to the test. Um, so the, this last slide is here for you to have your their contact information. I'll kind of leave it up for just about another, another 30 seconds or so as we close out the session. As far as as I shared with you before, um, Mapadoc uh, uh, with uh, Bill Gauss represents Mapadoc. And here is all of his information and how to get in contact with him. Uh, Caroline Walsh represents Starship and uh, shipping automation. And then Steve Showalter uh, um, uh, represents uh, ScanForce and their WMS solution. So um, as I close this out, I, I do truly thank everybody for being, uh, being in attendance today. Um, if, if you have any other questions after the fact, um, you're more than welcome to reach out to any, any one of three of them. And, or just reach out to the email that was part of the uh, the webinar itself, and, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, we we thank you again, and to the three of the three of you, I know they can't clap for you, but I, I'm clapping here uh, for all three of you doing a great job. And so with that, we've got this presentation done under 50 minutes. Hopefully.